Hundreds of students have skipped school and joined other climate change protesters rallying in cities across the country today. We need to focus on agriculture first. And agriculture doesn't actually come into the scheme until 2025 in the um, carbon emissions trading scheme. And we don't think that's good enough. We want to see the action being taken now. And organiser Izzy Cook is with us now. Hi, Izzy. Hi. Skip ahead unless you want to hear the whole thing. All right, so what's your top demand? Um, so this year for the strike, we're mainly focusing on agriculture. So our top two demands is banning synthetic nitrogen fertilisers and halving the herd of cows in New Zealand. Yeah. What do you having? You want us to shoot half the cows? No, not shoot half the cows. Um, it's a kind of. It would mean if you were t t talking in a literal sense that you would be um, kind of having less cows re reproducing as much, so that eventually you wouldn't kill the current cows, but eventually you would be able to get to about three million because we're looking to half it from um, the New Zealand peak of cows of six point three million that was in twenty nineteen. Okay, and when by by when do we need to have it? Um, well, we're calling for urgent action on beginning the process of halving this herd. So immediately we would look at beginning. How many people does our dairy and beef industry feed? Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I do know that most of the industrial farming in New Zealand is actually exported overseas. So most of it doesn't even feed New Zealanders. So are we happy if people overseas go hungry? Um, I don't think that if we aren't eating beef, we can't be producing other crops. So it doesn't necessarily mean that people overseas are going hungry. They could just begin to produce crops uh, locally and begin to eat locally as well, which would be much so, more okay. sustainable. So they need to feed themselves. So what are we going to do then? If we're not if we're not sending our dairy and beef overseas to try to make some money to pay for you to go to school, um, what are we going to make money from, Izzy? Well, it's a difficult question to ask what will happen to our economy if we stop doing that. I think the biggest thing is, is that we need to focus on everyone making these changes globally so that it's not just New Zealand's economy that's damaged from um, changes around climate being if made. Every, I know, I love that. I love that. Okay, so if everybody else does it, then we can do it. Does that mean if everybody else doesn't do it, we don't have to do it? No, I believe So you that. want us to, to harm our economy even if other people don't harm their economies? Well, I think that New Zealand government is kind of um, praise on the international stage so that if we begin to start making positive change towards climate, then other governments might follow suit. But they're not, are they? Because China's just building a whole bunch of coal plants. Well, I'm not sure if they are at the moment. But yeah, but they are. Izzy, how do you ban unnecessary air travel, which is one of your demands? What? How do you define... I mean, OK, so I'm going to fly up for a conference. I think that's necessary. Do you think that's necessary? No, I do not. How do we ban that? Who's going to be the guy who stands there and goes, Heather, we don't, nah, sorry, nah, you're banned. Who's going to be that person? Well, I think that you could have a set of events that would mean that air travel could be necessary for them, for example. So we would have to apply to have, like, approved events to be able to fly for? Well, that's one thing that you could look at doing. Am I allowed to go to Fiji? Is that necessary? In the current climate crisis, I don't think that that's necessary. When was the last time you were on a plane? Mm, I'm not sure. Maybe a few months ago, to be honest. Where'd you go? Fiji. Izzy! <laughs> Izzy! Don't you care about the climate, Izzy? Of course I care about the climate. Not enough. You went to... <laughs> you went to Fiji. <laughs> Izzy, come on, mate. Are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> are you serious, Izzy? No, it's are you, pretty are you still there? It is pretty ironic, but to be honest, it's not really a trip that I wanted to go on, but I can't really get out of it. Because Why'd, my you go? Go. Why'd you go? Why'd you go? My parents wanted to go. Izzy. I didn't want to go. How Are you embarrassed that your parents did that to the planet and then forced you to do it as well? Of course I'm not embarrassed. Did you have did a you terrible time? Not really. I didn't have to do <laughs> 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 
Lindsay, I'm sorry. Mate, listen, you're such a champion. I think you've got a brilliant future ahead of you. And and I, are you doing another strike soon? Yeah, well, we'll look to. Good. I will. I will. We'll talk to you again. Then why get you back on the show? Is he cook? <laughs> it's a school strike for climate. Wellington organizer. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Text machine is divided. I'm not going to lie. It is leaning more towards finding that particularly funny. And there, there, but there is a fair chunk of people who disagree. So, on the funny side, tell her she's dreaming. Lol, Fiji for the win. Heather, you're joking. Izzy is a hypocrite. Great interview. Ha ha ha. I cannot. She went to Fiji. I had to pull over. I was laughing so hard. She went super quiet. Lol, lol, lol. This is gold, Heather. I'm laughing out loud, says another. Heather, please stop. My ache, my sides are aching with laughter and I've wet my pants. Somebody says Fiji for the win. Okay. Now, obviously, you could tell from my reaction I'm on that side, right? I thought it was quite funny that this was this is what was happening. On the other side, texts along these lines. Heather, that was very mean. Heather, how embarrassing. Why would you treat a young lady like that? Heather, you shouldn't bring people onto your show and then bully them. Shame on you. Heather, there was no need to treat the way the girl the, treat that girl the way that you did, and I am disgusted. Now, I'm sorry. I am sorry to Izzy that that wasn't the best experience that she's ever had. However, that was not my fault. That was Izzy's fault. Because Izzy told you, you're not allowed to go to Fiji, but then Izzy got snapped going to Fiji. Am I allowed to go to Fiji? Is that necessary? In the current climate crisis, I don't think that that's necessary. When was the last time you were on a plane? Mm. Now, I did not expect that Izzy went to Fiji, right? I, I didn't know that. I was just asking a question, and then that's what happened. I'd call that suspicious. If Fiji coming up indeed was some fortuitous fluke, could see how it would justify a raucous reaction. But it had been alleged that Heather had been tipped off. In such a case, the laughter would not have been purely organic, by design to exaggerate how happy she really was about the current situation. But who hasn't done that? We've got a hide in at the local body elections. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Are you concerned about your chances? Elections? <laughs> Elections? <laughs> and nor have I ever done that. At any rate, sometimes when one's cynicism is rewarded so perfectly, there are only so many ways to respond. You went to Fiji! <laughs> are you serious, Izzy? I was just asking a question and then that's what happened and then all of a sudden I saw this, the, 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 the protest in a completely different light and the light that I now see the protest in is with respect a bunch of middle-class kids who are doing this for something to do on a Friday and so they can they can showcase their credentials on the environment, right? If you're going to say that you're going to do this stuff, you have to do it yourself. Otherwise, you're just wasting everybody's time. But you know what's going to happen is One News and Three News are going to be all over this and be like, look at these kids, they're so great. And then now you know what's really going on. Like here, yeah, look at this shot. Looks as though it may as well be staged. Like everyone has been told to look ahead, act natural. The journalist walks down the middle like they're breaking the fourth wall. As much as they may be reporting on what's going on, they're also part of what's going on. It is possible, however, that Abby Wakefield is a ghost that only some people can see, and that would explain how she got into the Lima enclosure. Back on protests, others too may have an element of performative art woven in. And who could know for sure what ultimately motivates people to do what they do, to join a cause or whatever. I do think there may be reason to question whether all the attendants at a thing like this are fighting with the conviction of which they claim. I think the government needs to take urgent action on climate change and I think they're not going to unless people come out and protest and tell them that they have to. The Prime Minister has made her feelings clear. My government will be driven by principle, not expediency. There will be those who say we are too small and that pollution and climate change are the price of progress. They are wrong. We will take climate change seriously. This is my generation's nuclear-free moment, and I am determined we will tackle it head on. The emergency has been declared. There is a governing majority. So then, the one person standing in the way of all the protesters' demands, he's the annual guest of honour at the event. I constantly say that we haven't done enough. You know, that we've done a lot, but we really are only just getting rolling. You don't invite Mussolini to an anti-fascist rally. Despite all the talk about urgency, it wasn't a whole lot different than it was the previous year. Even though there was a climate emergency declared in December, we're looking, we want to see some more action being taken. I'm not satisfied at the speed or the scale of change. The climate change minister admits the government's being too slow. It's like there is a tacit acknowledgement among everyone involved that all of this is pointless. No more coal! No more oil! Keep your carbon in the soil!
nobody's not listening everybody's listening and nobody cares when they're able to vote it'll still be for them anyway i guess hdpa couldn't bear the sanctimony anymore and she snapped if the, these young people want to be able to vote at 16 they want to be able to influence what we're doing if they want to be treated like adults, they're going to face some adult questions. And that is just what happened. I don't know how you argue with that. Still, I felt bad for Izzy. She sounds all right. She sounds nice. Come on. You want us to shoot half the cows? No, not shoot half the cows. But then that other thing happened. There was a notable change in enthusiasm and maybe some other stuff I could relate to. To Izzy's credit, she could have lied but didn't. Could have refuted the premise of the question, challenged it, pushed back, utterly rejected it. No indignant rage or refusal to answer. Didn't accuse Heather of internalizing systemic racism or sexism or whatever. Just seemed embarrassed and out of her depth, carrying the weight of this movement on her back. The weight of the world, as it were. Maybe Izzy had a valuable part to play, just wasn't meant to be the front man. Maybe Izzy had considerable talent, but not as a prop forward. Did you have Did you a terrible the... time? Not really. If you really were a passionate climate crusader getting roped into unnecessary air travel, least you could do maybe is not have a good time once you got there. Or maybe, all things considered, contemplate that this could be a bad look, so have some justification ready to go to offset any fallout. Like, yeah, but I planted many trees while I was there. Seriously. Now that I'm back, I might just plant some more. Like, what would I know? But still, some media training of sorts may have been helpful. I think she may have been hung out to dry here. Thereabouts, I think could be the real crime. If one can say anti-government protesters are generally being instructed by manipulative puppet masters behind the scenes, then can one really not imagine some sort of thing like that happening over here? Students we spoke to say their schools supported the strike. They encourage it when it's these kind of events. I, we actually had pretty supportive teachers. Yeah. The teachers actually encouraged it. Stuff, circuits, fire and furious documentary pointed out that women acting in a health and wellnessy maternalistic manner is straight out of the Nazi playbook is exploitation of younger people for your political ends a thing too? Bunkering down while they go fight your battles? Maybe a bit of a leap, but that's just good investigative journalism. Back to the subject of cows. We're calling for urgent action on beginning the process of halving this herd. I don't especially have a truck with any farmer. For up to me, maybe there would be no cows. Getting the numbers down would be accomplished through scientific forms of contraception. I have put thought into it, but my understanding. So far as mental health and well-being go for farmers and rural people, their communities have seen better days. For Christ's sake, just leave us alone. I could appreciate when they see stuff like this or they hear stuff like this. Our top two demands is banning synthetic nitrogen fertilizers and having the herd of cows in New Zealand. Yeah. It all might feel a little bit uncool, pretty much being vilified and having their livelihood undermined by these people who may or may not really know too much about what they're talking about. I don't really know what they know or not, but there does not seem to be much scrutiny. Like, think unnecessary air travel. So, I'm going to fly up for a conference. I think that's necessary. Do you think that's necessary? No, I do not. I am quite sure unforeseen consequences could arise if you could only get in and out of the country by boat. Unless, of course, it's for an approved event, though you got to assume the Ministry of Approved Events would quickly become inundated and backed up beyond all ability to function. But yeah, nah, everybody sort of just has to go with this and celebrate young people being politically engaged. Maybe Heather felt there needed to be a grown-up in the room. And the interview, of course, was labelled bullying. Which I think probably diverts focus from where it could better be focused. It's not just some boy thing, bullying. The other genders do it too. And obviously it doesn't always have to be physical to qualify. Sometimes behind the smiles, who knows what's going on. With these more public things, bystanders tend to jump in, hopefully mitigating how badly their person may be feeling by putting down the other person. So whether Izzy got bullied or just publicly learned a lesson the hard way, she has a lot of support. A coordinated attempt at cancellation is underway, and it has been suggested that it's time to remove Heather's right to vote. And then give it to Izzy. While the authorities are busy sorting all that out, the anti-DPA satire was possibly not generating quite as many laughs as the original ZB interview was. A more intellectual response with charts and figures and stuff was probably needed to not let this kerfuffle derail the wider debate, which people had put a lot into. Newsroom pointed out with an internet meme as a visual aid, the best way to change the system is from within the system. Obviously that doesn't make one a hypocrite. Ergo, accusations of hypocrisy in this case were some straw man fallacy. But using this situation as an example, Unless the person with sticks does antisocial stuff in their spare time with their family to the detriment of society while they demand society's immediate improvement, then this doesn't translate. And saying, hey now, modern society is reliant on certain things, we can't just change that overnight, is probably one of the more obvious responses to the strikers whose messaging on the face of it seemed very 
blunt. I think the government needs to take urgent action on climate change. We want to see the action being taken now. Not exactly a bounding willingness to compromise. Um, well, we're calling for urgent action, so immediately we would look at beginning. And I don't know for sure, but it sounds a little bit like it might be being made up on the spot. So we would have to apply to have, like, approved events to be able to fly for? Well, that's one thing that you could look at doing. There's some other interesting stuff in the article that I learned for the first time, like the futility of making eco-positive decisions as an individual until significant structural progress allows your personal impact to actually matter. So all the people abstaining from pregnancy have been duped. You can have your babies now. Before the baby stuff, though, talk about a straw man argument. The article was clearly in response to the News Talk ZB interview, primarily. It's in the headline. The interview where a policy banning unnecessary air travel came up. We get to get told here that we're reliant on something unnecessary because it sidesteps the plane issue by throwing automobiles and meat into the mix. Which may be dumb examples anyway, because there'll be all sorts of hippies out there. To paraphrase the rest of it, young people have esoteric insight and their protesting is a necessity. As long as they keep doing that, their personal choices are allowed to contradict their demands of others, just until there's sweeping legislation telling us we all have to do the thing, and then it will be an even playing field and it doesn't count as hypocrisy in the meantime. So it's a little bit like saying, I am a sinner, I admit it, I am no better than anybody else. But then in brackets after that, but because I can acknowledge it, I sort of am a little bit better than everybody else. And when we get to heaven, I will stop being a dick. I'm not so sure Team Climate Strike could legitimately rationalise any of this into a public relations success. Well, sir, this is uh, obviously, uh, well, this is obviously a fuck-up. Maybe a more emotive response was needed, and the spin-off provided that. Giving the young activist's parent the opportunity to add their input. Nobody asked Heather's parent what they thought. But in the spin-off article, things seem to become a bit more clear. With his apparent admission dropped in there. Such a disclaimer that probably wouldn't have needed to be included at all unless it were to come clean while downplaying what everybody probably thought anyway that indeed a string or two were being pulled from behind the scenes. Why is it? Given this opportunity to defend her, after all that derision she's endured for appearing idealistically phony, the article says this bit about her wanting to stay home to study and hang out with friends. Nothing to do with concern for the climate, nor for the appearance of a conflict of interest. Understandably clouded a bit by emotion, possibly, it seems to forget what exactly it's even defending here, the article that is, and it just makes things worse. It talked about focusing in a reflective manner, but it was sort of about how everybody else should do it. It proudly confirmed the air travel thing happened, but doesn't justify it, and then it tells everyone how they need to do better. It decried the use of ad hominem attacks, but it sort of did them. And these talking points, arctic, ice and extreme weather, I don't think have been relevant at all so far. But along with some other stuff, indicated someone well versed enough in baseline rhetoric to know air travel is a sticky issue. And such an Achilles heel was likely to come up at some stage considering it was one of the climate strikers demands, which surely couldn't have been missed by someone who, even if just in a casual capacity, was a proofreader and media trainer. Izzy, if you're listening, we really like you and we'll have you back on the show again you're a top notch top notch person don't go to fiji izzy you're hurting the climate i think izzy is owed an apology not from heather but rather from those expecting her generation to navigate a world where it's like you're trying to give them all anxiety disorders in order to save themselves they are encouraged to draw up some signs and some banners and come up with some chants and then pick it for a few hours each year while looking around and seeing that nobody else really seems to care that much so they can try get their head around that while being periodically reminded of their imminent doom. Whenever their efforts are rewarded with good news, all they're going to see out of it, if they watch the news, is that everyone's disappointed and the experts say the changes will be meaningless in the scheme of things anyway. This initiative actually sends the wrong signals to the wrong sector. That's what a victory looks like. So maybe some of them feel compelled to do more, probably doing their best to become as knowledgeable as they can on the subjects they're talking about. But then their support team cook up some ominous vulnerability. And nobody seems to give them any advice on how to handle it. As if everything wasn't hard enough for them already. So without naming names, I think that Fiji-related faux pas is mostly on them. Mostly.